Hey, this is Stephanie. And I'm Nina. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to Live by the Spirit Podcast. Podcast. Welcome back to the Live by the Spirit Podcast with Stephanie and Nina. Hi. Hey. I apologize if I sound so congested. <laughs> I really don't think you sound congested. I think it's just you. Oh my gosh. We were in the middle of praise and worship this morning, which it it was probably one of the best praise and worships it was we, so good. we've had in a while. Um, and I'm not kidding. This is going to sound a little gross, but I just kept feeling like, you know, when you can just feel like mucus going into your nose and like you can't breathe all of a sudden. <laughs> It kept happening, and I had to keep running to the back and having to blow my nose. Is that what you kept doing? I was wondering. Yes, I, that's why I, had to, I kept – and it, it sucks because a, a lot of us go to the very front to do praise and worship, and I just – I had to keep blowing my nose because it would become a distraction if I just kept it, and then all of a sudden, like, I had to cough some gunk up. My allergies this season, it's bad, y'all. <laughs> I don't think I have allergies, but I've been told that since I moved to Tennessee, I do. You so could develop I should probably them. go get allergy tested. But you should. I mean, I I feel like you would know if you had allergies. Well, because I was like so sick, you know, when we both were sick. But that was a viral well, no. sinus infection. Well, no, I know. But after the fact, I got like, it was like weird congested sick. Yeah. I've, yeah. So it might be because of that. Who knows? I don't know. Welcome to Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> well, today... Yeah, we're doing a movie review of mm. Jesus Revolution. I mean, what a fantastic film. Yeah, we went to go see it twice. Yes. We are both planning on buying it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have the book. Yes, you do. That I've started reading. I wanted to hopefully read all of it before we recorded this, but I just have not had the time to do that. But yeah, what I have been reading has been really, really good. Yeah. And I have the pretty new cover with the... Uh, you know, I like it. Is that Lonnie cover. on the front? Well, I mean, it's Jonathan as Lonnie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got on Amazon if anyone wants to read it. Super, super good. But yeah. Yeah. So we thought we'd start out with the plot. Well, we should probably do something very important first. Yes. Spoiler. Just to let you guys know, there are going to be a lot of spoilers in this. Um, so if you have not seen the film and you don't want us to give anything away, I just want to give a spoiler warning now so that way we don't get any comments or anything saying that we ruined the plot or anything for anybody. I've yeah. had that happen to me before. You've had that happen mm -hmm. to you. Like, literally. Oh, you weren't there. We, a couple, like, at the beginning of the year, we went over to our friend Carrie's house and we were watching Les Mis. And it was the first time our friend Joe was ever watching Les Mis. Yeah. And it was, Je our friend Jen asked us very kindly not to sing to um not give anything away joe hates when people talk or sing during movies yes. and so because it was his first time watching it, it yeah i i'm sure I, you weren't sorry talk or sing. i'm a musical theater person which is so hard it's so hard in lame musicals so like i just made sure i was not sitting near joe and i just kind of was singing to myself you know but <laughs> our, one of our friends i'm not gonna name names but he gave away like a huge moment right before it was going to happen too and it was just upsetting so <laughs> i don't want anyone else to feel like we're ruining something so if you want to if you're hoping to see it if you haven't seen it yet maybe just skip this episode and then you can come back right after you watched it yes i would agree but just wanted to give that warning out before we started for at sure. this point the movie has been out for over a month right has it mm -hmm. oh my gosh yes did we go see it in february we did because oh, it was right before right I left on spring break trip. It was also right before the fast yeah. started. So, yeah. Bro. This movie has been out for quite a bit of time. By the time this episode comes out, I believe it will have been out for almost two months. That is insane. Which is crazy. Yeah. But. So, I mean, if you haven't seen it by now, I highly recommend you go and watch it. Mm -hmm. Fantastic movie. Even after we talk about everything, I still recommend going to watch it. Mm -hmm. We're both going to buy it. 
Oh, yeah. I'm sure I'm it's definitely going to buy it. And hopefully it'll come on a streaming service, too. I know for some people it's a little harder to go to the movies. Like Probably Amazon Prime, if for, I would guess anything. Yeah. My my dad and stepmom, it's, it, it, sometimes it's just be a little, like, it's a, a whole event to have to go to the movies. And it's expensive. So I think they said they're just going to wait for it to come out on something streaming. So I think because it's the same makers of Who Made, I Can Only Imagine, and I Still Believe, uh, with yeah. Lionsgate. Both of those movies are on Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. so I'm assuming that this movie will probably come out and, on Amazon Prime. Um, oh gosh, Redeeming Love is that what that movie's called? Redeeming Love is also on Amazon. Prime. Yeah, and it but yep. with the so with the same company. Fun fact, um, oh gosh, I forgot what that radio station's called, and it's gonna drive us crazy. But the company that helped make all these films, um, they have a headquarters here in Nashville, and one of our friends, uh, LB, works there. So. Um, our friend Genesis reminded us when we were in the theater the first time we saw it that her name was in the credits, so that was really yes. cool to see. <laughs> so go LB. But, yeah. Uh, anyways, would you like to share the plot with everybody? Yes, I'm going to read the plot. It's a little bit longer. I do apologize if I trip over any words because it's Sunday afternoon, y'all. It's, it's Sunday. 4 it's 30. Norm- this is normally our nap time. <laughs> By this time, we're normally napping. Yes. So we haven't had the chance to do that yet today, so we are tired. But that's okay. It's okay. We're having a blast. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So Jesus Revolution follows the story of Greg Laurie, Lonnie Frisbee, and Chuck Smith. Those are our main three characters in the movie. So in 1968 in Southern California, a respected pastor, Chuck Smith, finds that his church is slowly dying with an inability to connect with the younger, live-free generation of hippies. One day, his daughter Jeanette gives a ride to a colorful hippie hitchhiker named Lonnie Frisbee, who says he is traveling around and telling people about the good news. The good news meaning Jesus. It was in all caps. I just felt like I had to say that (laughs) because you guys aren't reading this. (laughs) And fun fact really fast before Mm -hmm. we continue. um, Yeah. That I've I've watched so many interviews that Greg Laurie has done and, and just some other people that were involved in the film and who were actually there. That was just something Lonnie did normally. He decided, yeah. like, I don't know if he didn't have a car. Or obviously, he was a, a hippie in the, you know, late 60s, early 70s. But he hitchhiked. And the reason he hitchhiked was because he wanted to be able to talk to people about Jesus. And I just think that was really cool. And in the scene in the film when he gets in the car, the first thing pretty much out of his mouth is talking about how much he loves god so yeah that was actually something he did in real life so fun yeah fact. so that's awesome so chuck at first is suspicious of lonnie but eventually warms up to him and welcomes other hippies into his house this includes lonnie introducing chuck to a band called love song they join forces and start a successful movement to evangelize hippies and others chuck continues to invite hippies into his church even after backlash he was receiving from members of the church Meanwhile, high school student Greg Laurie runs away from his junior reserve officer training corps class and joins a girl named Kathy who brings him to a Janis Joplin concert with Timothy Leary preaching the value of psychedelic drugs for self-discovery. However, Greg sees that various hippies are dangerously irresponsible and Kathy's sister almost dies from a drug overdose. In search for the truth, Greg and Kathy find solace at Calvary Chapel, which is Chuck's church, And even though Kathy's uptight parents are not enthusiastic about her relationship with Greg and her new faith in Jesus. The ministry explodes in popularity, being seen as a Jesus revolution or Jesus freaks, and even sparking a Time magazine cover in 1971. However, Lonnie eventually leaves for Florida after having disagreements with Chuck. Chuck buys a church in Riverside and gives it to Greg to take over. (laughs) Sorry, Riverside, represent! (laughs) Steph born is there. from Riverside. I was born there, man. She lived there till she was seven. Hey, we moved to our lovely. You can't city forget where Tennessee. you're from at all. Very true. So yeah, he buys a church in Riverside and gives it to Greg to take over, um, and that became his new church. And he eventually marries Kathy and becomes a famous pastor himself. Chuck Smith and Lonnie Frisbee are remembered as founders of the widespread, widespread. Wow, what a word! Calvary Chapel movement. And are more generally known as leaders in the Jesus movement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good, good, good little that plot was a little summary. Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> I edited it. Edited it. Yeah. Edit? Edited it. Edited it. Edited it. I don't like that word. That. Edited it. Yeah. No. Yes. I think, yeah, it's a great little thing. Obviously, the movie is two hours long. There's yes. so much that happens in this film. One thing that 
you know, before we kind of start breaking down a little more that I really enjoyed about this film is it almost there were several parts that I felt like the film could have ended and I would have been content. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Isn't I feel like crazy? there was at least like three different times where yes. I'm like, oh, is the movie done? But they yeah. and whatever they added more, it was always yeah. so good. I think a big one for us was the baptism scene. We Oh my god. And we we'll get into that in a second. But I just remember wow. all of us looking at each other and just being like, Okay, the movie should be done right now. We were like all crying. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> Steph sobbed both times she watched oh the movie. Oh my gosh. But I feel like you cried at different places. Yeah. Both times. Yeah. And we can get into we'll that a little bit that, more. Yeah. But I think one thing and the reason we're talking about this film in the podcast is obviously it's a Christian film. But yes, I have never in my life, in my 25 years, have felt the Holy Spirit in a movie theater before in my entire life. And I think particularly the first time we watched it, I wasn't the only one that cried. Pretty much everyone that came with us teared up at, at one particular yes. moment in the baptism scene. Yeah. And it was the uncontrollable starting to cry of like I have like the only time I ever cry like that is when I feel the Holy Spirit on me. And I just realized how much this film, it could help plant seeds for people and just for even some Christians who don't understand the Holy Ghost and just how powerful he is. Um, it it just was one of those moments I was like. I just kept looking at the people around me. I'm like, are we really watching this right now in a movie theater, in a regal movie theater? Especially in 2023. In 2023. like Especially with all like the political and religious oh, and yeah. so many divides that we have. Like to have a movie come out that is so mm-hmm. not even faith based, but so spirit. Yeah, it was spirit filled. driven. Like so to the point. And I think that I've never seen a movie like that before. Mm-hmm. And especially like. I know that we'll talk more about this in a second, but it wasn't Hollywoodized at all, in my opinion. Really no, at all. Yeah. No, it was not. Yeah. So I think a, a way I really enjoy Jenna and Kevin's podcast for the Glee reboot. I love <laughs> Glee. Sorry. I know that's not the most Christ-centered TV show. <laughs> <laughs> We've both seen it. <laughs> I we, know. Like, literally. It's honestly the hilarious. The only Jesus in that film is the episode of Grilled, Grilled Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Orphan cooks a grilled cheese and he sees jesus's face on the front of it and he it's, literally brings that thing with him everywhere he yeah and we can we could probably talk a whole episode so about that funny. about at the time i remember thinking oh this is awesome they're bringing jesus into glee now i watch that episode i'm like this is not this Christian. is not good this is not good <laughs> at all um but anyways that's besides the point what they do in their podcast that i really appreciate uh because there's so many plot lines in one episode of glee they haven't like an A storyline and a B storyline and a C storyline, you know, just kind of depending. So I think that's kind of a way we're going to try to stay organized. So, um, you know, our A storyline, we're just going to kind of talking about uh, Lonnie and Chuck and that whole relationship for sure. Yeah, because it starts out with Chuck, you know, the pastor of his church, Calvary Chapel, and mm-hmm. then Lonnie, a hippie coming along. His daughter, Jeanette, well, Chuck's daughter, Jeanette, brings Lonnie mm-hmm. to him because he says, you know, he says at, like, the beginning of the movie, he'd love to, like, I don't know if he said he wanted to have a conversation with a hippie. Or he did. I think that's what he well, said. Well, it was, it was, oh, I can't remember the right wording of it, but I think Jeanette made a comment. She was just saying, like, you don't know them. Yeah. Um, And he's like, well, if one comes to, the, it was, like, almost like a comment, like, and this is probably totally wrong, but it was almost like a comment, like, if one comes to the front door and has a conversation with me, then, you know. Yeah, so she literally was like, perfect opportunity. I'm bringing this Jesus-loving yeah. hippie to my pastor father. But it was even one of those moments, it's like, you have to be careful what you ask for, because God will give it he to you. He literally, because at one point he goes, she goes, you said it. He goes, well, I didn't mean it. I was like, hey, <laughs> you got to be careful what you ask for, because yeah. literally, God will God will do it. That's what happened. That's, you know, what's so funny to me is um, there was an instant a few years ago where I had someone tell me that they were praying for patience. But then there was, but they were like, I just feel like I just want some more patience. Like I can be like, you know, I just want things to happen so quickly. And then the Lord started bringing opportunities for this person to be patient. And this person was not happy about it. No. And that's the thing. Like they always say, like people say, don't pray for patience because God will legit test you in your patience. And it's, and it's a good thing, but you got to be really prepared for that. But that yeah. reminded me of that moment and oh it was yeah like 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, one of the thing I had in my notes was about wanting hitchhiking. I think that that is incredible you know thing and it made me think like how can we in our everyday life try to bring god more into it you know like simple transportation <laughs> like like literally getting around hitchhiking to literally yeah. tell people about jesus is what he did yeah which is insane because if you think about that today i would never get into a car with a stranger like no. i literally never in my life taken an uber or anything like that I have. that scares me i have I had to take a lift one time by myself uh, and I was literally like praying in the spirit the whole time. I'm like, please don't let this person yeah. take this. Me. Like that scares me too much. But I think that's also cause I'm paranoid, but yeah. I mean for that, like we could pray yeah. over that. Yeah. He's also different cause he was a guy. This was a long time ago. And it was seven. It's like, how can we, like you said, how are, how are we actively pursuing opportunities mm-hmm. for the Lord to be able to use us in our everyday yeah. things? Yeah, and I'm going to read a quote, and we I tried writing this as we were watching the film the second time, so it may not be all the way correctly corrected, um, but when Chuck and Lonnie are having this conversation, uh, just one thing that stood so out to me is uh, Chuck made a comment about your people, almost like like an insult. Like kind of like condemning people. hippies Cause, almost. Yes, and Lonnie just said, my people, I like the sound of that, and then he goes into saying, my people are desperate. They are children that are searching for all the right things in all the wrong places. Sheep without a shepherd chasing hard after lies and people rejecting them. And your people reject them. And your people rejecting them. And then they talked a little bit about like something else. But then another line I got in there is like, we can only walk through doors that are open towards us. And, and the part that I missed was he was talking about churches like Chuck's chuck's church they don't open the doors for them yeah and he's and i remember lonnie specifically saying your doors are not open yeah and uh you know that was you know obviously we can only talk about the scene that was in front of us we were not there when lonnie and chuck first met um but i just loved it when he said we can only walk through doors that are open towards us because that is so true like yeah you know I I w- would love to be able to get to walk through Taylor Swift's door and have a full conversation with her, <laughs> but that door ain't going to be open for me. Stop. You know, I can only go so far and I'm not going to be a stalker or anything like that, but like, <laughs> but you know what I mean? And it's just, yeah. and, and so I just thought that, that was a very powerful statement and that statement right there, you could see the shift and Kelsey Gr- uh, Grammer did such a good uh, job portraying um, Chuck in that moment mm-hmm. because you could see the wheels turning. Yeah, and he like got up and he was like, yeah, broken by that. Yeah, but it's true. He crying. needed somebody needed to like call that. that out. Yeah, and that changed know, a lot for him. It changed a lot for him because he stopped seeing this group of people as druggies. Well, not just druggies, but like just like I don't know, looking down upon a group yeah. of people. Um, And I think that that was so powerful and he was able to welcome them in. And I know that that caused troubles in in the film, but also in real life. And a lot of people left the church. Mm -hmm. But then also look about like, look at what came in. Because at one Mm -hmm. point, I know that this is one of the next plot points we're going to talk about Mm -hmm. is Chuck washing people's feet. Oh, you can go right into it, girl. Yeah. And like one of the very first conversations that they, you know, there was three guys. Mm -hmm. I would assume that they were maybe elders or you know they were yeah they were actively contributing monetarily to the ministry Mm -hmm. that they were doing at the church yeah for sure and they made they made sure to say that and they said you know they're they're dirtying up our new carpet he goes (laughs) oh the carpet is what you're worried about (laughs) so the next sunday there's this line Mm -hmm. of hippies like the largest line and the guy walks up to the front and chuck is literally washing every single person's feet I as they walk through the door got chills. it was so good because not only was it like a dig at them for that comment but it was also a, another dig because it's like jesus washed the disciples feet mm. it's such a servant-hearted thing to do oh yeah and believe me i'm like i was thinking you know i i i danced for 15 years of my life i don't like my own feet let alone other people's feet yeah and so and who knows i and again i haven't gone crazy far into the book so i'm not sure if that actually happens or not but you know just you know watching kelsey Grammer do it you know and just having that servant heart i think is insane and, and he literally was like i baptize your feet in the name <laughs> of the father the yeah. son and the holy spirit and i'm like honestly like that's so good yeah 
yeah no it yeah. was it was is such a good thing i know somebody just really quick interjection that i follow on instagram and when her now husband proposed to her he washed her feet Aww. as like a show like That's i so am sweet. serving you that literally so sweet. it was i so don't good. know if i would like that but well, <laughs> it was for her that it's was sweet. like a big yeah. you know showing of like he is here not only to yeah. you know walk with her but also to serve that her. it represents a lot more than yeah yeah i think it's i think it's good so that's that's kind of we're starting up our a storyline we'll go into our b storyline a little bit and then we can backtrack because i definitely i want us to talk about the baptism scene in particular but um yeah. i want to get through our b storyline which is you know greg and kathy mm-hmm. and i know that that was um particularly our big thing about you know the whole truth conversation yeah, yeah that was something you were pretty passionate about yeah i liked how from the very i want to say it was like the first five minutes of the movie first 10 minutes of the movie the first time we're really seeing greg he you know goes to school and afterwards what's his name joel Curie, <laughs> joel courtney courtney totally wrong sorry joel courtney he I, I, I have to say i am sorry i have to pause this he was so good in this film. I love him. I had only ever seen the very first kissing booth, and I barely <laughs> made it through that film. I barely made it through the film. I have refused the to watch the other two. Ever. I've it, never seen awful. two or three. I normally like stuff like that, particularly if it's a book. Like I'd read all to all the boys. I read the Summer and Tim mm-hmm. Brady. I did not read the kissing book, um, the, and it and it just sucks because I wasn't able to appreciate his acting. He is so no, good in this. He was so good because I just recently watched the second one with my friend and then watching jesus revolution i'm like one he's playing a completely different character yeah he's playing a goofy and also guy. i i follow him on instagram and i've like known that him and his wife are so christians cute. and i've seen them talk about that which is awesome mm-hmm. but i just he did a good job i have the biggest crush on him and i know that i know, I know he's, he's married he's married i'm sorry but like he was awesome god will bring you a godly man just I, like him i hope sure. so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah <laughs> I liked from the very first time we see Greg, you know, we see him, you know, kind of wanting to have like, like the normal high school, Mm -hmm. like, but he's in this, you know, military school. And the very first conversation then him and Kathy have is about the truth. Mm -hmm. And she's talking about how there's a bunch of different truths. And he says back to her, no, I think that there's some things that are absolutely true. And she asks him what? And he goes, I don't know. I haven't found it yet. And then throughout the whole movie they're pursuing this idea of the truth and they do find it in jesus it's so cute like there's i i I don't normally like in movies particularly when you see in a movie theater where it's like the camera is on the actor and the actor is looking into the camera it feels so Mm -hmm. intimidating and that's and that's how they filmed that scene yeah and when he said i don't know i haven't found it yet it Mm -hmm. like his goofiness in it it was it was cute but it just was like it got you excited because you realized this is what because obviously you're not going to come to a movie called Jesus Revolution <laughs> and hear a character in the first like 10 minutes talking about like trying to find the truth. Yeah. And not like expect for him to, you know. Yeah. Find it. But it we was, knew what we were getting into. But like mm-hmm. it's too it's too I really loved that conversation yeah. and that interaction because they do reference back to finding the truth several different times mm-hmm. after that. Yeah. And I think what's really cool about from my understanding of what really happened was when Kathy and Greg met, Kathy had already kind of started in her Christian life. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, again, I wasn't there, so I can't speak too far into it. So I feel like the movie did, obviously there was a little bit of, you know, they had to. Yeah. It was, a, it, you know, we have to remember that this was the story. This is a story version. They were playing a character. Yeah. Um, rather than, you know, this, like, they would have docu- did a documentary if they wanted it to be true. Uh, like on everything but um yeah i honestly kind of did like though that they had it where they were walking through everything together yeah um you know the whole thing of them at that concert yeah when they did the drugs when they did the drugs but it was also like like you said i don't remember the person's name but that person who was preaching about how, how like drugs Timothy will help you leary yeah how his whole like i was just reading a little bit about him when i was you know reading that plot that i was reading and his whole thing was just advocating for psychedelic drugs. That was like mm-hmm. his life, like That's his crazy. life's work, which That's is crazy. Wild. Yeah. Um, one moment in this B storyline that it kind of goes uh, mixes into the A storyline. Sorry, line. I just snipped into the camera. Oh, the you're so good. I just they understood. It. We just talked about <laughs> allergies in the first five minutes of this. Was um, the scene? There's a scene where Greg was in a car with. <laughs> 
I'm dying. I can only think of him as Barry from. Out yes, of we're about to. I so his name. Mina and I were were watching this movie the first time. That. There is a bunch of us go- that are at this at this film. There's a bunch of our friends that went, and this guy comes on the screen, and Mina and I just look at each other. It's like this. And we had just watched season three of Outer Banks. We like, we had did. just finished it. And we just look at each other. And we're like, Barry? Is that Barry? And His I, name is Nicholas Cirillo. I literally said, is he only ever playing, like, a druggie? <laughs> literally. Like, he he does a good, I hate saying he does a good he job. Hopefully, a good hopefully that's not who he is in real life. Um, but anyways, he was in the car with this guy. Uh, and he was driving very irresponsibly under the influence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... I think that's when, that's when Greg was like, you need to get me out of this car. Get me out of yeah. this car. It was a wake up call for him. Yeah. But he was very high on drugs and mm-hmm. he was running around. Once he did get out of the car, he was running around in the rain and he looked into a car window and it said die. And the first time I saw it, I looked at everyone around me. I was like, that's so demonic. But then I was just thinking about it when we were putting things together. Mm-hmm. I was like, what if that was a sign from God? Yeah. In a way. I think it was demonic and saying like, I think the first time I interpreted it, it was saying like, you, you need to die. Like you need to almost necessarily kill yourself like in that thing. Mm. But now looking at it, I'm like, I, that could have been God in that. Like, and again, this is the movie here, but mm-hmm. it could have been God in that moment. Just saying like, if you le- continue down this path, you are going to die. Yeah. I think it was like you were saying like another big wake up call for him to be able to but see th- that. But then he turns around and who is right behind him? Lonnie Frisbee. Lonnie Frisbee. And that, mm-hmm. in that moment, Lonnie sits down with him and he plants the first seed. Yeah, Cause Greg's just Greg. like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I don't want to mm-hmm. die. And he goes, no, that's the drugs lying to you. Yeah. But he starts talking about Jesus yeah. and It's all, and we talked about this a little bit in our last podcast about the the power of planting seeds. Um, Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you can plant a seed and a seed could not fully grow, but it will start, it'll grow a little bit no matter what. And so I think, um, I think in that moment, you know, that that seed was planted and it it was starting to grow and you could see Greg change throughout the film in that, in that regard, but particularly right there, Mm -hmm. that was a big moment for him. Yeah, definitely. I think another the one i think the one quote in the whole entire film that really got to me was um like you had said in the plot kathy's we watched kathy's sister go through an overdose and in real life kathy i think actually had two or three older sisters and they just combined it her mm-hmm. them and the one um you know and kathy starts to try, you know kathy mm-hmm. meets lonnie thinking you know i want to experience you know yeah. this and see if this is real and she encouraged greg to go to this church with her and he gets super overwhelmed and because when they were praying for this one guy people start putting their hands on yeah. greg and praying for him but also the parallels that guy came in screaming i'm dying i'm going to die yeah. and that is exactly what greg had just said yeah. to lonnie oh so yeah. good lord yeah and he like greg runs out yeah and kathy sa- runs out after him and said you know we're we say that we're talking about tr- like we're looking for truth what if this is it yeah and well to and then greg says gr- what well act- i don't know if he said this before after she said that but he said what if it's another drug it's good for a minute and then what yeah and then you know because he w- she was saying then she says i think this might be real yeah and, and it- then he was like I can't lo- I think he says something about how he can't lose another thing again because yeah I think he's so many things have let him down he's been so let down by especially by his mom and I feel like that's where a lot of it like, yeah rooted yeah from in the movie of course sure. um but yeah but it made me think while we were watching that and the reason why I think so many people choose to turn be- to drugs and alcohol rather than to God is because drugs and alcohol they're going to fix your problem right away well, they don't even fix it. They just suppress they it. They suppress it. But, like, if you're feeling depressed or sad and you – or you're full of anxiety, and I can just speak from my own experience of my past, and you take a shot of whiskey, mm-hmm. it's going to loosen you up and you're going to feel so much better. Yeah. But let me tell you, that's going to last you only a little bit, and then you're going to start to sober up. You're going to wake up the next morning and realize, wow, wow, my problems are still right there. And if not – 10 times worse with a hangover yeah, honestly <laughs> like uh, literally and so i mean i think that's why so many people do because every particularly this generation we want the quick fix we are so used to having so many things just 
happen. So instant. Like we Amazon. Get everything instantly. Think of Amazon. We c- I can get I could order a package right now from Amazon and get it here in, within a couple hours. Yeah, and that's why also I think it's you know patience is so hard for us because mm-hmm. we are so used to having that instantaneous gratification. Yeah. And we shouldn't be used to that because you know God don't God does not always work that way. Sometimes we get answers instantly. Sometimes mm-hmm. we wait and we have to be patient mm-hmm. and waiting upon the Lord. Yeah. And so I think that it's you know it's hard yeah especially in this generation now yeah so but it, that that moment just kind of hit me because i was like that that's a perfect line and mm-hmm. it's it just it's so and it, i feel like f- at least for most of us who went together we could all have a moment in our life where we felt that yeah yeah so yeah and it was crazy well i think now do you want to get to the most amazing part of this whole entire film the baptism the baptism scene that had all of us weeping man wow can i i want to say one thing real fast so i forgot what the cove is called it's in california it's pirates cove pirates cove it's in southern california um so funny i was talking to my dad about this the other day because i'm from riverside Uh, i was born in riverside my dad said stephanie you've been to that cove so many times i was like i have because i literally (laughs) after the movie i made a comment i was like i want to go to this cove all right who's who's about to go to i was like i want to go to this cove and get baptized like i want i want to experience this yeah and i told my dad that he's like stephanie you've been to that cove numerous times and you've been in that water numerous times and i'm like what so (laughs) it sucks that i moved when i was so young and i can't remember things like that i still think we should definitely go down there i think we should too I think that that I I would love that even I would trip down I even trip down there yeah and I think I went to uh, I went to a um to a thing on Friday night um and there was a a pastor there who said who wants to be able to baptize someone and he he said you may think that you do not have the power to baptize someone but if you have a strong relationship with God and you live and walk by the Spirit he's like I see some of you guys having baptism parties in your apartment and baptizing people in the bathtub and so I was like because yeah. the whole entire time I was like crap do we have to like if we like actually wanted to do this do we have to figure out when they're going to be down there to get baptized and I'm like how amazing would it be for because we have such an amazing Christ-like group of friends and yeah. I know that's rare yeah our group is amazing yeah. no words no words we're very yeah. blessed very very blessed. but how amazing would it be if we just all went down there together and it baptized each other that'd be really cool but i also would love to experience one of their baptisms yes i would there. also too yeah i think that'd but, be so wild but i think but yeah i think that'd be so cool i don't think there's necessarily a qualification no like you don't have to have a title <laughs> Is that, was that your siri yes she said i've always wanted to be cool <laughs> What sparked Sorry. that? What I did don't we know. talk about? I don't know. Maybe she wants to get baptized. <laughs> yes, yeah, Siri. Siri through the waters of baptism. My little Apple Watch Siri, of course. Um, she yeah. can go underwater. She can. <laughs> but um, one thing that was really cool about this scene was when they were filming it, apparently some of the extras were just feeling like the spirit was moving. They, yeah. they were praying and everything. And Greg Laurie, the real Greg Laurie was there. And, and while while you are watching the scene of Greg being baptized. So actor Joel Courtney. Greg Joel Courtney Laurie getting being baptized. baptized. The real Greg Laurie is literally off to the side out of camera view, really baptizing people in real like life. The extras that like were the extras hired there to be on the film that wanted to get baptized. Yeah. And I think that Crazy. is why I you have chills feel, right now. I do too. Literally. But Let's I look at my goose. <laughs> you can't see them. I have a shirt on that doesn't allow me to. But I think that's why when you watch that scene mm-hmm. that you get swept with the at least the first time it, the, that you watch it. The second it, time was just as powerful. It was just as powerful, but I mean, I was sobbing uncontrollably because it was I look over you were gone. I well it I felt, was tearing. You were gone. There was there's something about watching a character mm-hmm. or just or even someone that you know in real life go through the things that they have gone through and then yeah. stand there and and declare the jesus as their lord and savior and lonnie yeah. walking him through it that's when i started crying yeah and i think like because he was hesitant he was even hesitant walking into yeah, the water he was he went right up to lonnie he's like mm-hmm. you know i don't know and she, lonnie's like do you want to make that decision right now mm-hmm. he's like yeah yeah so they prayed in the scene and then he gets baptized oh my God. and i didn't appreciate this scene enough when we first saw it because i was sobbing <laughs> literally but oh. he's in the water yeah 
and he's just kind of floating there and then all of a sudden he's he like, he sees a light mm-hmm. and he reaches his hand out and goes swims up. up towards the light and i didn't know what that i like i get i didn't appreciate it enough and then i realized i was like how cool of a representation of what baptism is because we are going into the water with our sins and coming out to a to, w- to white yeah. to clean this because we yeah have been purified in that moment because jesus have died for our sins i think the first time i watched that um i mean i'm sure i'll talk about this during my testimony episode but i just got baptized at the end of january yeah you did you almost Um, did it i almost did it (laughs) i got baptized when i was 15 and then i just got baptized again um literally didn't plan it was so unplanned but i think that you know watching greg get baptized was like such a because i feel like after you get baptized you're on such a high you are a little bit and i feel like my high was starting to kind of fade mm -hmm. a little bit and i watched that scene i was like i need to remember yeah that is me Mm -hmm. like i saw myself so much in that scene of like Mm -hmm. i am i left so much in the water and i need to be done with those things and like we like you said like we are cleansed we are made clean and like it hit me so hard because i was like that's me like i just Mm -hmm. did that i need to you know it was a really good reminder too but yeah. Yeah. It will. And also one of our pastors, um, at least when I got baptized um, a couple years ago, uh, I got rebaptized a couple years ago. Um, you will be on a high, but the enemy is going to start attacking you in that oh, moment. Yeah. He was strongly. starting to attack me like really strongly right before we went to go see this movie. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I I've, uh, there, I think I had a couple issues and I wasn't even sure at one point if I was able to go like I like the whole <laughs> Yeah, so it's crazy how the enemy affects you, but um, but yeah. yeah, so you so that so if you've been thinking about getting baptized or, you know, been uh, or want to get rebaptized, it's just something you know you need to be praying over the spiritual warfare mm-hmm. that's going to happen after because the enemy is going to try and really start messing with you right after yes. that. And if God's calling you to do it, listen. Yeah, listen. that was at me. But. I just yelled at myself when I said <laughs> that. But uh, but yeah, it was such a powerful scene that yeah and then right after that scene we got probably the most comical moment actually there was a lot of comical moments probably two of them (laughs) was shortly after this one but the first one is with our b storyline do you want to say the quote that i'm thinking of that greg said to kathy oh (laughs) so afterwards kathy was like oh are you actually gonna officially ask me out and he was like i just want to let you know if you ever come between me and god it's over for us (laughs) It's over between us. And she just like looks at him. He goes, that sounded so much better, better in my head. head. We all start dying because it's like one. Yes, that should always be the expectation yes. in your relationship. But it was just so funny because like she totally mm-hmm. agreed. But yes. it was so funny. Like I think they laughed about it. They had a fun time. With it. it was hilarious. It was also fun for me because it was one of those moments uh, that he said that and we all laugh and I'm like, man i can't wait till i find my person that god has destined for me and we have a similar conversation honestly i think if a guy said that to me it would make me like him 10 times more honestly like oh my gosh yeah so it was just a funny moment the second funny moment the first time i fell in love with greg Laurie was that moment right there there. the (laughs) second the second funniest moment that literally cracked all of us up was the car Oh, Do you want to explain my the car? Please gosh. Explain the car. Okay. So right after Greg gets baptized and, you know, starts going to the church, you know, he, so he had a really hard relationship, kind of toxic relationship with his mother and he needed to get out of the house mm-hmm. because he was always constantly having to pick up after her drunken nights, her, you know, the men that she would always chase after. So he moves into this house so since all these hippies are living with chuck chuck's like y'all need to get out of my house (laughs) he bought them a house like started renting them this big house he goes well he's like well it's condemned but (laughs) like that was the whole thing like it was cheaper because the house was like condemned or whatever yeah (laughs) which was funny because they got a bunch of christian hippies living in it so they all move in so he moves into this house and they're like oh greg we got you something so he goes outside and they bought him a car. So they're like, now, so you don't have to go pick Kathy up on your bike. bike. Ah, I and love they're it. like, yeah, we just prayed over it. So it, <laughs> it should, should work, work really well. well. <laughs> he gets in the car, starts it up, and it works. And then it dies. <laughs> and they're like, we got to pray over it again. So everyone puts their hands on the car. <laughs> and they start praying. About it. Amen. They, he starts it up again. It didn't work. Lonnie goes, you're making me look real, real bad <laughs> down here. <laughs> And, and he's like, I've prayed. He's like, I've been insured by the guy that the, this, the, 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 
the engine is brand new or something like that. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if it was the carburetor. Maybe that's like, what it yeah, was. it was the carburetor. That this is a new carburetor. It was it just was so, so funny. funny. We and everyone in the theaters laughing, and obviously, like, there is. We did that yesterday when we recorded the first episode. Like, literally, yeah. we were having some technical difficulties, and I just started going. I was like, Lord, like, and it sounds so crazy to pray over something like mm-hmm. a material item like that, but. In that moment, I realized, I was like, no, Lonnie has a faith, has a strong faith that God yeah. will help him through through any situation, yeah. even something mm-hmm. mundane as a- making Greg's car start. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. And then Kay, he goes to pick up Kathy and her dad's like, that's a piece of junk. She goes, that is awesome. You have a car? <laughs> like, so excited yeah. that he had a car. Yeah, which I yeah, obviously in that moment. Kathy's dad doesn't understand everything that Greg has gone through and how yeah. how that piece of junk is the most amazing thing that yeah. could have happened to him, mm-hmm. at least other than Jesus, of course, in that he moment. Also, he also just did not like Greg. No. But in, but in the film, we kind of saw this, and in real life, both of Kathy's mm-hmm. parents came to Jesus. Yeah. Same thing with Greg's uh, mom and yeah. and his adopted father and his, uh, I believe, his, his birth father. He f- met his birth father, and they all came to Christ. So. Yeah. That was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, one other scene that cracked me up because I just read this in John um, was the scene we we talked about it a little while ago with the with the man in the wheelchair that came in screaming, "I'm going to die! I'm going to die! I'm going to yeah. die!" He also we saw him get baptized, um, same time as Greg. And there is a part a little later on in the film where the reporter is asking him about Josiah. Josiah, <laughs> I thought you, we have a friend named Josiah, <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah, because, I mean, obviously this whole movie, at the end, you find out that Josiah, this reporter, who's going along this whole entire journey, I want to, it literally looks like he's there for, like, almost a year. He's, like, there through so much, Mm -hmm. and it turns out at the end, he's a writer for Time Magazine, and he's the one that wrote the Time Magazine article. So Josiah is talking to this guy in the wheelchair, interviewing him, Mm -hmm. and that's when, that's where we are when this scene yeah, happens. I'm trying to find where I was about to like talk about in my Bible, and I'm struggling to find it. Of course, I'm struggling to find it. <laughs> um, but anyways, he uh, there's a scene, and he said, and Josiah's asking him like, "You seriously like you have no like you have no urges like you um like you're how, completely clean. You're completely clean. Like how is that even possible? Like all of this stuff." And he kept saying, I'm totally delivered. And Josiah was like, but how? And he was like, man, I just told you. And Josiah's like, that doesn't make any sense. He goes, I know. Yeah. (laughs) But it just reminded me of, man, I I hate that I can't find it. But it just reminded me of in John how uh, when Jesus healed the blind man. Because uh, Jesus, you know, he. he, Is it Matthew 9? I'm sorry, John 9. Wow. You know what? I believe it is. Thank you so much. for. Oh, oh here it is. Oh, thank Sorry, you, I Google. Just, no, it, thank you, the Bible app. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, um, you know, Jesus, you know, this man comes up for healing and um, and Jesus uh, tells, you know, spits in the dirt, rubs it in, in his eyes, and then he tells him, now go and wash your eyes out at this certain, like, fountain. And that's what healed the blind man. Well, you know, the Pharisees, I believe it was the Pharisees. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. The Pharisees, um, like got the blind man who's not no longer blind. And they started interviewing him and being like, or questioning him and being like, well, how did this happen? And he told them the story. Jesus spit in the dirt, put it on my eyes, told me to go clean my eyes out. And I got healed and they kept asking him. And he's like, I literally have been telling you the same thing. And I wish, uh, and I should have been a little bit more planned out of where exactly it says it. But go and read John 9 if you haven't. And actually, like, because we've always heard the story of the blind man. But mm-hmm. um, they even get his parents involved and, like, his family. And just, like, how, do you know how this happened? And they're, like, we know what he's telling you. And it just reminded me of that moment. It, it How s- small of a moment that is because it was almost like a quick flash. If it's you, like quick in passing. Like they're panning to show how big the church is becoming. It's something that you could miss, but it was like one of those biblical parallels because I yeah. had just read that in John. And I remember thinking that is so cool that mm-hmm. they did something like that. So yeah. I appreciated that. So, yeah, I guess we could kind of go a little bit into, um, you know, I think a big thing that really hit home 
uh, for this for me personally was after we got done with the film the first time I called my dad and was telling him about it and obviously my dad was alive in the 70s <laughs> um, and my mom was actually you know alive and living in Southern California when all this was happening um, and I started talking about Lonnie because I didn't know too much about this guy yeah and my dad made a comment to me he said well Stephanie well I'll backtrack my mom when she was in college got pulled into this cult it was known as the shepherding movement and I don't want to get into it. You guys can go look it up. And honestly, I'm not educated super well in it. So I'd <laughs> hate to say something to be wrong. But she got kind of formed into this cult called the Shepherdy Movement. And we were talking and he was like, Stephanie, Lonnie Frisbee was one of the founding people of the Shepherdy Movement. And I was like, what? Yeah. What? This guy who I just or at least I just watched a movie about this guy who was so spirit led did that yeah and it reminded me as the movie went on we saw moments where Lonnie became incredibly I hate using the word proud yeah but kind of got full of himself he was very prideful he was very prideful and that is you know a sin and Mm -hmm. it sucks that that the enemy I mean obviously sucks that the enemy does anything but it was one of those moments it was like this person who completely changed a community completely changed this church body did yeah. all of these miraculous healings did such good started to have this pridefulness mm-hmm. that ended up ruining it for him yeah cuz there's at one point where like they were like on the air with some lady mm-hmm. and he was like oh my church but not talking about it as in like Oh, I go to this church. He was like, "No, it's my church." Yeah, like he was the way he talked it. about it. And like Kathy and Greg are like, "What?" And they're yeah. like looking at each other. And then he also talks about like claiming himself as a prophet. Mm. And yeah. like there was other few different things that happened. And also, you know, when Chuck would get up to speak and he would like get up and like it was like a whole. There's someone who there can't was, hear in their left ear. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like. Not to say that the spirit can't do that, because we obviously know that that well, that and he can. We saw him do it earlier in yeah, the film, but I think it was he didn't like the fact that Chuck was going to get up and pre, and he wanted it to. Yeah, be you could kind of see the you kind of see the greed and yeah, and um, and then right after that, another comical moment that probably wasn't supposed to be comical, but we always laughed at it every time was. Lonnie out by the bonfire in the oh backyard. Oh my gosh, it's so bad. Like, you and Jude laughed so hard, and I was like, "Why are we laughing? This so, is so sad." Well, no, it's so sad. <laughs> it is a sad part. Jude and I made a joke. We're like, "Dude, that's so you." Like, <laughs> <laughs> it is. No joke. It's like, no, rocking it's, back and forth. <laughs> Lord, don't leave me. Continue to yeah. use me. Great. It was kind crying. of like it was kind of it was kind of like a montage moment where there's music in the background, but Greg. Greg wakes up and can hear Lonnie outside screaming and Lonnie's just out by the bonfire holding his Bible, just screaming like, Lord, please do not leave me. Please use me. And it reminds, and you know, for me, I have been there. I've been there where I cannot hear God's voice. And it is so frustrating. And there's, and, and you don't know why. And then it's like, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, the enemy plays in those moments. Yeah. And like, you know, God isn't real or he wouldn't have done that. Or like, you know, blah, blah, blah. But God, chooses times to be quiet for a reason oh yeah and so it was just one of those moments where the I, the way they set it up i could see it being a little comical yeah. and i and, and it's, it wasn't funny but it was funny. it wasn't funny and i hate, hate saying that we were like jude that's you i think we just we just mean that like jude just loves the jude lord loves so the much lord, and he is constantly praying he's constantly like, do, talking about the bible constantly doing everything that's something yeah. that we love about our friend but yeah um, but yeah, it was just like, it, you know, but I, you two laughed the second time. I was like, y'all, this is a man who is struggling. But I will say it, it also was one of those moments. He was he in that moment was like, please don't leave me. And it wasn't because he was worried about God leaving him. It was because he was worried that he was not going to be able to preach or yeah. be the center of the spotlight. Yeah, because you see it right in between as he's doing all these healings. And right after he calls himself a prophet, like, yeah. Then you see him up at night, and then, like, shortly following and that is when he's, like, interrupting you're seeing, Chuck. Well, and then you're seeing problems with him, him and, his and his marriage. Wife. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's 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 uh, it's uh it's out there. It's public knowledge. But when they moved to Florida, they moved to Fort Lauderdale. I believe it said that they got divorced maybe, like, mm-hmm. two or three years after, so like, 1973. Um, you know, and he started the shepherding movement. It was – I kind of – I found something online kind of talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, – 
it said, but Frisbee's uh, demons hounded him and he became involved, um, you know, in, in some things with certain people. And um, I'm trying to find the exact moment. They So Frisbee and Chuck had their break in 1971 uh, when, you know. That was the year that the Time magazine came out. Yeah, but that was around, the t- you know, they kind of showed that they were arguing and, and, mm-hmm. and you know. I think I think Chuck was trying to call him out in love and yeah like Lonnie's like I think also you don't want to like he was really yeah like it was hard for him to be able yeah. to take and that I think, advice and I think for Chuck he was put in a very difficult position because yeah. this was his church he's the head of this church and he has to look out for the church yes um but they had that they got their divorce in 1973 and then he became a uh, part of the shepherding the first shepherding movement uh led by Bob Mumford probably totally butchered that um and uh yeah and then it says during that whole time while he was preaching um you know to some large venues his morals were failing and um he it was like they called it an open secret he would party on saturday nights and preach sunday mornings yeah and then he ended up living um you know he died of aids so he definitely lived a life of lgbtq Mm -hmm. um and i think it was also interesting when he first met chuck he talked about you know we did everything and we did everyone he did say that yeah yeah and it's Mm -hmm. it was very he was very open about that um yeah and from my understanding of things that i have read and from greg himself lonnie did come back to god Mm-hmm. in a strong way towards the end so that's always good and we we're, mm-hmm. we're happy because he was such a spirit-led human being yeah. he had such gifts from god but i think if anything we can learn yeah from him i think one thing i'd like to talk about is greg girl um get it i think that the one thing my one huge takeaway that i loved the first time i watched the movie is you don't just see after greg comes to christ you don't just see like him living the high life not sorry not high like on drugs but like <laughs> high on the lord yeah literally it, you see the ups and downs because mm-hmm. obviously some people have this like they just have this thing that they're like oh once you come to god your life is great right and we're like no like that does not mean your it's life actually is great can be quite the opposite we yeah. live a very challenged life as i hate saying challenged life as christians no, we we're true. very blessed but we get put into a lot of difficult situations yeah. And so you see a lot of Greg's up and downs with that. And just like, you know, when Lonnie leaves, he has such a hard time with Lonnie leaving. He's like, everybody always leaves. And like, you see a lot of his highs and lows. And I really like how they portray that because Mm -hmm. it is so accurate to what we go through. Like we go through highs and lows and we go through, you know, times when we're like, God, where are you? Because I don't see you actively working. But like he is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really liked his, they, how they portrayed him. Yeah. Yeah. Another one of my favorite, this will be my, my last comment on funny moments, but was when uh, Lonnie asked him to record a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> That's my and, life. And they were talking, and the night before, they were talking about Jonah, and I yeah. forgot exactly what he said, but he had made some comments, something, and Frisbee said, That's awesome. Can I use that? Yeah. And he was like, Yeah. And then he was like, Maybe journaling while he was like, right, like reading yeah. Jonah or something. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> So he gets he's up to filming, preach his sermon. And he says that line, and, and, and <laughs> Greg looks at Kathy. He's like, that's my <laughs> line. It was so funny. It's, it was funny because it just, I think, t- in those moments, you could kind of see how wholesome Greg and Kathy yeah. were, and it just was super cute. But, um, yeah. But, yeah, you know, I, I think you kind of answered this, but who was your favorite character in this whole entire film? I mean, I obviously love Greg. I want to say, like, I don't know. I loved Chuck's character. I think Chuck was good. Chuck was so good because you don't, you, he's not like an antagonist in the beginning, mm-hmm. but you d- he you don't like him right away. Yeah. Like you don't love him. He and seems then like I, a stuffy pastor. Yeah. And like I love to see like how he just becomes so like joyful in the Lord and mm-hmm. like how his personality changes. But I yeah. think probably Greg. Greg yeah, was a good one. I think Greg also for me, just because I think like you said earlier, I could see myself a lot in Greg. Yeah. And also knowing you know the real greg Laurie and everything that he has done um is just really incredible so Mm -hmm. i think i also like greg do you have a best supporting character kathy kathy Mm -hmm. i'm trying to think who's mine i love kathy but maybe i don't know i don't have a good one i don't know i think it's gotta be kathy yes kathy was good honestly i did like jeanette jeanette was good chuck's daughter yeah honestly um what's his name from Outer Banks. 
Barry. Barry. It was kind of nice seeing him. He was funny. <laughs> he was funny. Yeah. I don't know. I thought that all of the supporting characters did a really good job, but probably Kathy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you technically consider her a supporting character, but the movie isn't I think the, about her. No. So I think, I think she she's is a supporting character. So she's probably my favorite supporting yeah. character. Okay. Best outfit. Mine is Greg Cyburns. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say probably I loved Lonnie's big, uh, his oh, like his jacket in the his, beginning. I, she called it a cape. I don't <laughs> know if it was technically a cape. It kind of was like a shawl or something. A vesty thing. But it was like, it says Jesus loves you across the top. And it, like, it's a big painting of Jesus on the back. Yeah, it was cute. Loved it. But also when Greg first comes to the school oh yes and, and he he's know wearing how to dress. this like fringe jacket yeah. he'd never had to he just tried to dress to blend in yeah and it honestly, honestly looked like more of a 70s like costume yeah. we would wear if we were going to a decades yeah. thing kathy's outfits were always slaying throughout yeah. the whole movie she had phenomenal we outfits. kept talking about like i'd wear that now oh i would literally wear all of her outfits they were awesome so um yeah. your favorite moment like, we've kind of talked about it but yeah obviously the baptism scene was definitely my favorite baptism scene for sure i liked that and then i liked obviously like i love the whole story between greg and kathy so i think that when they got back when they when he proposed to her at the end how like the parallel when she says back to him if you ever get between me and God, it's over between yeah. us. Like saying that back to him, I thought that was like a good moment. I think a, a one thing I one moment I really really loved um, was the very end of the film, right before that, when Chuck um, Chuck gives or Chuck gives Greg the keys to the church. Which it actually, it sounds like in the film that Chuck had bought this church for Greg. Yes. And in all actuality, um, it was a loan, and Greg paid him back. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know we see a group of people come in and yeah, scream I this. I love that. scream at him like in a good way they're like is this you know is this the place that um that people come to get baptized everyone's mm-hmm. been talking about and he's like yeah where are you guys from and they're like we're from texas and he's like do you know when like people will be here to about ba- to baptize and he's like you and greg said do you want to do it right now yeah and greg like goes and baptizes these yeah and it was one of those moments he's still young it's only been a couple years yeah. And it was one of those moments. It was just like, it kind of hit me in that moment. It's like, I could do that. Yeah. We could do that. Yeah. And I think that moment was so cool. Like, these people drove out from Texas. Texas to California, like, yes, that is probably a shorter distance than we would have to drive. No, I will never forget. But when That's when, a long drive. Dude, I'll never forget when we moved from Riverside to Nashville. That was the longest drive. And my dad doesn't yeah. like driving like too crazy during the nighttime and i was so young that it, yeah it took us several days there was this one time that my brother was moving but he was deployed at the time and we had to get him an apartment and we rented this big u-haul and my dad <laughs> i had to lay in the back so we only had two seats and my dad's like seat belted me to the back of oh his and i literally was like swaying around in the back of this u-haul Oh my gosh. Y'all are crazy. You drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't even. Okay. I think uh, one thing that we're obviously going to start to wrap this up, but one fun fact for you guys, if you don't know, uh, one of the men that Lonnie Frisbee uh, talks to on the pier, because they're, you know, we, we, the, it's, we start seeing them handing out these fi- flyers just talking about Jesus. And yeah. Obviously, Greg redesigns it because Greg's an artist. And mm-hmm. and uh, that kind of starts the whole thing of, you know, I think we've all been in a place where someone will bring you something. I will never forget. I was in uh, I was at, in Florida at a beach in Florida one time. And uh, I can't remember which beach. And um, I was out just, you know, out on the sand, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know listening to a podcast any with two of my friends courtney and emily and this guy with the with this black leather vest that says bikers for jesus came up and handed us pamphlets and was like do you know jesus and i was like yes sir i do know jesus and i don't think he was prepared for that yeah and he was like well do you know like that jesus died for your sins i was like yeah john 3 16 for god so and i quoted the whole thing and i was like and then I, I, coincidentally, I had my Bible with me. I said, yeah, I actually have my Bible with me right here. Yeah. <laughs> and it was one of those moments he was like, oh, okay. Because, I mean, they are expecting, like, I've done beach evangelism before, and you're expecting to, like, get shot down or for people to, like, not yeah. I was like, truly know who Jesus is. I was is. like, dude, I'll talk to you about Jesus. <laughs> let's talk. I was like, well, let's talk. Bikers for Jesus. <laughs> Bikers for it. Jesus. But it was, like, one of those. But anyways, but um, but they were up in the pier, like, handing up, you know, pamphlets and stuff but um one of the guys that they hand uh 
this pamphlet to mm-hmm. um, is the guy who plays Matthew in The Chosen with Jonathan who played Lonnie. So, yes, Jonathan plays Jesus, Jesus. in The Chosen. Yes. And the guy who plays Matthew in The Chosen is in cameo in this movie. Yeah, and we didn't catch it the first time, and then we we're watching it the second time, and Jude literally, or um, it might have been uh, our other friend that was with I think us. it might have been Chad. Uh, just was like, that's Matthew. Yeah. And then we all looked and we're like, ah! That's so, so funny. So it was a, just a cute little fun fact for you guys. Yeah. You didn't know. So, because obviously I think, you know, Jonathan right now is really, really known for his portrayal of Jesus. But I think yeah. particularly after this role, I'm excited to see what else the Lord has in store for him. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. But yeah. Do you have anything else to add? I don't think Any I do. Other other moments? No. Yeah. I apologize for this being so long. It's okay. <laughs> I, we, we figured this was going to be a slightly longer a long one. Episode. Yeah. I know we we also we talked about maybe doing a movie review of Redeeming Love too because yeah. that's a really good film mm-hmm. and maybe a couple others. Uh, we both really love movies, yeah. And so we're trying trying to find ways to incorporate that into this with a godly purpose. Yes, I agree. So you mm-hmm. want to end us out? Yeah. Well, thank y'all for listening. It's been a blast. Yeah, we always have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, so yeah. So yeah, I guess we'll. See you guys next week. Yeah. Make sure some blessings. Make sure to follow us on socials for any updates or anything. Yeah. All the fun. At Live by the Spirit Podcast. Yeah. Follow us on Spotify. And hopefully this is on Apple Music. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> on all the places. All the places. Yeah. You can follow our personal social medias at Stephanie Graydon and at Nina Trank on Instagram. I don't really do any other social medias. Yeah. Steph, do you do other social medias? I work marketing, so yeah, I'm she on everything. All the <laughs> I, I do not. I always make jokes. It's like it's hard for me to take a social media fast because I actually can't. Yeah. But mm-hmm. that's what it is. Do yeah. not add me on Be Real. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone's going to go add you on Be yeah, Real. Try to find Nina's me. Nina's just not going to add you back. Sorry. Probably. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if I ever get back on social Be media. Be Real is so hard because it's like I want to add a bunch of people, but at the same time, mm-hmm. I don't want it, my whole Be Real to be so cluttered. So it was hard. I had to get rid of some people, but then also mm-hmm. some people just stopped posting, which actually yeah. helped me out. Or they just haven't followed you. No. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's some people I just don't care to see. Yeah. Not, not that I don't. Sorry. That came out so rude. There are just some people where it's like, yeah. I want to, I want to see what my friends that I act like acquaintances. I don't need to know what well, you're it's like doing, the people that you're surrounded by every single day. Yeah. It's like, it's a comical thing, but also like, your closest people yeah. that you don't get to see to, like it's the, yeah that's the purpose of exactly it. yeah and you, when you have like 150 people that you're oh, following man it's so hard to go through everybody um yeah so, especially yeah. when i have a five minute time limit on my be real right now yeah i like cannot get through everybody i was like all yeah. right i'm done oh, fun times yeah anyways <laughs> thanks for listening yes and we will be back next monday yeah catch you later bye bye I can hit this one.